Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. December 1, 2020, the Meeting Monster Edition. First up from the Financial Times, Andrew Hill on his always great on management column, talking about making the most of the right to choose where to work. Uh, He talks about obviously working from home, but in WFH, not working from home, and how that uh, many employees want to have a mix of both of these options. And this is going to require splintering and rebuilding of tasks Um, that uh, many employers have really not thought through. Obviously, this has profound implications for job design. Some can be dismantled so that one group of specialists can perform the in-house tasks and another group takes tasks can can be carried out from home on a flexible schedule. Um, uh, Clever businesses can organize around both work from home and not work from home tasks into new bundles. But that's going to take some work from management. However, uh, if this is what employees want, uh, you would think that there would be some companies who would be uh, somewhat sensitive to that. Next up from the Wall Street Journal, uh, it turns out Credit Suisse had a much more extensive uh, spying program on their own employees than previously uh, disclosed. Lawyers hired by the board in the aftermath of the spying scandal have found at least two other instances of employees being uh, surveilled by private investigators, despite the bank's assertion that it didn't condone it. The additional incidents involved employees being followed um, and otherwise surveilled. The uh, scandal first broke in September 2019 uh, when a uh, bank's executive uh, spotted uh, surveillance on him. Uh, But you have to wonder uh, who at Credit Suisse would be ordering this and really what kind of culture is um, at the bank. Certainly, if you're going to be uh, physically surveilled, it speaks to an incredibly toxic culture. Uh, Bank surveillance in banks is, you know, when you have consumers or potential bank robbers, but uh, this is very different. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what the Swiss authorities do, if anything, about this. Next up from the Wall Street Journal, a risk and compliance journal, Jack Hagel reporting, uh, talks about the increasingly evolving job, a uh, role rather of internal audits. Aud- auditors who are once a small cog in corporate machinery tucked away in finance and primarily looking at financial controls. But in the past 20 years, the role has expanded as investigators and regulators have demanded more disclosures about how companies manage a wide range of financial risks. Um, so this, uh, if you've listened to some of my podcasts with Jonathan Marks, he has certainly uh, talked about this and it's something that... Uh, we are doing that in the compliance arena as well. So um, uh, as internal audit continues to evolve, uh, as risks continue to expand, and more importantly, as uh, boards of directors demand more information around risk management, we're going to see the role of internal audit. And finally, our final story comes from the Financial Times, uh, which is um, wh- why we must kill off the meeting monsters in the business life section by Pil. Litta Clark, Um, and she talks about just the disaster of meetings, who uh, disasters of meetings where uh, employees' uh, behavior just destroys the meeting. They come unprepared, and they make remarks, and they talk about themselves, and that this really destroys productivity, and it even uh, can uh, denigrate toxic culture. So if you have meeting monsters, you need to try to get rid of them. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow.